western North America, there is a predator that truly owns the winter. Striking fear into the eyes of its prey. Now when people think about aquatic birds, they probably think about penguins or ducks, like these mallards here. But from Alaska to Mexico, inhabiting mountain rivers and streams, including here in Montana, we have North America's only truly aquatic songbird, which is of course, the American Dipper. down on the slide particularly but I got a chance to meet with Dr. Jay Rotella, professor of ornithology at Montana State University, to learn more about these mysterious little birds. calories per bird per day. Yeah, there's several features that people really uh, do enjoy about dippers and the uh, they're so aquatic and so tightly tied to our mountain streams which of course are beautiful habitats and so I think partly people just associate the bird with a place they like but the bird itself is pretty special. The dippers dip. When they're standing on rocks along the streams, they bob that body up and down is what they're named for. People don't really know why they do it, but it is sort of got a cuteness about it. The ability of that bird to get in and out of the water in fast moving streams and, and swim, uh, wade into the water, just jump into the water, and it doesn't matter if it's the middle of the winter, if that water's still flowing and not frozen, dippers are going to be using it. And it's just remarkable to see a bird that small jumping in and out of the water. And then their voice, I think the voice of the dipper is something everyone loves. Their voice is just beautiful. So they have a lot of characteristics, but being that small and living in that mountain environment, all year round is just something about them. They're sort of a cheeky little bird that people seem to get a kick out of. Most birds have some areas of their body where there's no feathers underneath that outer feather coat. There's some naked skin and dippers don't have that. All that area is covered by down. They also have a really big preen gland, and so right on the base of the lower back, birds have a little gland that secretes oil, and they squeeze that with their bill and get oil and spread it on the feathers to keep everything nice and sealed up. They eat aquatic insects of uh, kind of well-known ones to fly fishermen and well-known to trout. Uh, so caddisflies, mayflies, stoneflies, small little fish, so minnow-like fish but mostly aquatic insects. When they're up on rocks in the winter when it's super cold and you've just come out of there with wet little cold feet, then they can also tuck those feet up into that incredibly dense feather coat and, and keep them nice and warm and avoid losing too much heat. When they're in the water, they can close down the flow of blood to those little skinny legs and toes. They've got what's called a counter current heat exchange in their legs and feet that allows them not to get too chilled and lose too much heat out of there. And that's where the vein and the artery in the foot or in the leg are running right up against each other so they can rewarm the blood as it comes up and not send very much blood down. So it's very efficient. They send just enough down to keep that tissue from freezing. That sounded cold. So I went to see for myself what it might feel like to be a dipper. We're not feathered, obviously. We don't have enough hair to keep us warm. Yeah, we're not built to tolerate it, for one thing. We don't like having cold feet. I don't know if they like it, but they tolerate it, and we, we wouldn't. If we dove into water in the winter and we were without clothing or a wetsuit or some special gear, uh, you'd get hypothermic pretty quickly. Oh, that's deep. Oh. Being a dipper is cold. Oh, 
okay, so they, their feet are okay, but they also go under, so see what a dipper feels like. So in the end, I learned a lot about dippers, and learned that I could never be one. But that's okay, because as my mother always told me, I'm special in my own way.